Brushes are obviously an important component of grease pencil. We've already seen some in previous videos, but let's dive right in and explore the grease pencil brush set, talk about textures, and then make some of our own. Brushes are accessed in draw mode. The topmost portion of the toolbox deals with drawing tools and brushes. There are actually four categories of brush. These are draw, fill, erase, and tint. Each has its own set of brush tools, and each can be customized to varying degrees. The one we'll use the most, of course, will be the draw brush set. So our main focus will be here. Like other 2D paint programs, there are enough basic brushes to get the ball rolling. But even before you get the hang of it, you're going to want more. If we open our preferences and go to the add-ons, let's search for grease pencil tools and enable these. Now, when we're in draw mode, next to the icon for the brush in our active tool settings, there's a new menu item, download and import texture brush pack. This adds a whole bunch of cool texture brushes which will create a range of fantastic texture effects. If you wish to have them load when you next open your 2D animation preset, don't forget to save the startup file. While you can absolutely use your mouse from here on in, I highly recommend that you work with some form of drawing tablet. All grease pencil brushes have the same basic settings. They all require a material which can be selected via the material properties or from the drop down in the tool settings here. A specific material can also be pinned to a specific brush. So as you switch out brushes and then switch back, you don't have to reselect the same material over. This is something I forget to do very frequently. So this pin function is a bit of a lifesaver for me. The radius and strength settings can be manually adjusted and the pressure sensitivity for drawing with a stylus can be toggled on or off. And the caps or ends of lines can be set to rounded or square. The next two drop downs can help you fine tune your brush in various ways and we'll look more closely at these when we're creating our own brushes later on in this course. The brush settings can also be seen in this section in our active tool settings and properties such as pressure sensitivity can be further fine-tuned via these curves under radius and strength. Now while you can modify the default brushes it's probably a better practice to not mess with these but instead make a copy and customize that. At any time, of course, you can revert the brush to its factory settings, as well as check or uncheck the fake user shield so that the next time you open your file, only the brushes you want in a certain project will appear. Let's begin with an existing brush. I'm going to select the ink pen brush and duplicate it. All the settings for that brush will be copied, including the base material, caps type, and any custom settings that might have been enabled for the tablet pressure. I'll change the name. And over here in my active tool properties, I'm going to close up the color segment and open the brush settings. You'll notice that already the radius has got pressure sensitivity toggled on, but the strength hasn't. You'll also notice under brush settings, there is a customizable curve. This is to give a more organic feel to when the brush is used with a stylus. Now I'm going to further adjust this curve like so. And now test out the brush. This is almost like a leaky calligraphy pen, a look which is popular amongst digital inkers because its unpredictability makes it look a lot more analog. I'm going to lean into this with a few other settings. Under my advanced settings, I'm going to set my angle to 35 degrees and the factor to 
This is going to detect the angle at which you hold your stylus. And depending on that, it's going to create a thicker or thinner line. Under stroke, we have three main options, post-processing, randomize, and stabilize stroke. I'm going to enable my randomize settings. You'll notice that the radius, strength, and UV settings are active, but the hue, saturation, and values are grayed out. That's because we need to enable our color attributes for those to be enabled. I'm gonna set my radius to something like 0.35. Now, next to each option here, we can tell the randomized factor to work per stroke or via the tablet pressure. The jitter is set to zero, but tablet pressure has been enabled. And it also has a curve which we can fine tune the uh, jitter settings for pressure sensitivity. Now, I'm happy with this brush but I do encourage you to play around with the settings until you've customized your brush in a way that you're happy with. One brush setting that is a little tricky to work with, but totally worth mentioning, is the outline setting. The outline setting becomes available if you enable post-processing under your stroke settings. Outline, as the name suggests, will transform any stroke into an outlined fill. Setting your caps to rounded or square will also affect the resulting outline. The thickness is a ratio of the brush radius. Zero being almost non-existent, just so you can tell that there's an outline there, and one being completely filled. Your stroke material is transferred to the outline of this new shape. This is also true for dot or square materials. Material allows you to choose an existing material to fill the area of the outline stroke. Now, instead of using just the plain solid fill for this demonstration, let's add a new material slot and import a texture. I'm going to import the halftone texture that we created a couple of lessons ago. Just a quick note, if you're creating the materials as you go, make sure you've either locked the solid stroke material to the brush you're using, or remember to set your brush material back to solid stroke before painting. Now when I paint, the stroke provides the shape and the texture fills in the area. Adding a color attribute will affect the overall material also. A texture will not align the same every time either. This is because the orientation of the texture is set according to how Grease Pencil maps textures to shapes, as was discussed in a previous lesson. I like this method of creating brushes as it provides me a way to quickly shade with halftones or crosshatching or even tileable textures without creating a shape or a mask. To make the custom brush, I'll open up a new blend file set to 2D animation. I'll start with the default pencil brush and duplicate it. I'm gonna give it a name, Pencil Graphite. Switch the material to Dots Stroke. Then duplicate this material and relabel this Graphite. And change the style to Texture. If you've already done the lesson on creating your own texture, then let's select the pencil01.png file from where we saved our brush texture. Otherwise, select any of the graphite textures that were supplied with this lesson. Set the blend to one and leave the alignments as path and rotation as zero. Under the advanced dropdown, I'm going to leave the input samples at 10, but change the smoothing to around 0.05. Because I want a little variance based on the stylus angle, I'm going to set my angle to 35, but the factor to something very low, like 0.075. Now in the stroke dropdown, 
I'll begin with the post-processing settings. I normally like to keep this disabled unless I want to smooth out a line with solid materials. But if I leave most of the settings to zero, I can still keep a low smoothing on it without breaking up the line into obvious dots. I'll now enable my randomize settings. I want some things to be jittered in this texture. Otherwise, it's going to look very weird and uniform. I'll start by setting my radius to something like 0.15 or even 0.25 to get a little bit of variation in the thickness as we work. I'm gonna set my UV all the way to one for maximum randomness. I won't enable either stroke or pressure for any of the settings. Now finally, under the active tool settings, I'm going to open up the brush settings and edit the curves for radius and strength. Now I'd like my pencil stroke to begin large, then shrink before tapering off. And I want my strength to be as opaque as possible, but to also be affected by the pressure. I'm gonna leave the caps to round. Let's enable the color attributes so that we can choose a dark gray or any color you like. Then draw a few strokes. Now mine isn't bad, but I can still tweak the settings a little bit until I'm happy with it. And I suggest that you do the same. Sometimes it takes drawing a few pictures or doing a lot of strokes and tweaking until you come up with something that you're really satisfied with. Once you are happy with your new brush, pin the material to the brush, make sure the brush has got a fake user shield on it, and you can save this file for future brush testing. As we close out this chapter on brushes, I'd like to share some time-saving tips for creating new brushes from other textures that you may have created. In my 2D animation preset, I've imported the graphite brush we just created. I made sure that the brush material was pinned to it before importing, so you should see the graphite pencil texture show up in the pin material, and whatever color was assigned to it is also pinned. If you take a look at materials, it doesn't automatically show up when you import, but this material is available in the dropdown. As soon as you begin to draw with this brush, the material will automatically be added to the list here. I'm going to duplicate this brush and rename it Bubbles. I'll also assign the bubble thumbnail to it. Now I'll assign the texture. Here is a neat thing to know. Because the graphite pencil texture is pinned to the pencil brush, we can save a step and not have to add a material slot, but just duplicate the graphite pencil material here and reassign it the bubble texture. Now, once we've done this, we'll have to unpin and repin the material to the new bubble brush. But again, it'll automatically switch as we do so. I'm going to set its base color to white. Oh, I better set a very light color attribute to it as well. <laughs> because the brush that I imported already had its blend set to one, I won't need to worry about the color attribute taking over the material here. And in order to see this properly, I'm going to drop down the world background color to something much darker. If we now paint with this brush, you'll see that the texture has been switched but it doesn't really look like a string of bubbles. They're too closely packed together. So now we have to tweak some of the settings. Let's take a look at the post-processing. I'm going to increase my simplify value to something quite high. So this will remove a lot of excess points once we've finished the stroke. Now we have wider gaps between each of the bubbles. Under the randomness, let's increase the radius random value slightly but I'm going to drop my UV randomness to zero. The light direction needs to be consistent here. This means that I'll also have to change my alignment from path to fixed. I'm gonna set a rotation of about 35 degrees here, and this will make it look like the light direction is coming from uh, an angle. Because the color attribute has taken over as well, I can select any color I want and if I randomize the hue just a little, maybe some value, and of course the overall jitter, 
we can get some subtle variation in each bubble instance. Now finally, let's check that the layer properties that we're painting on has use lights enabled. I'll toggle into object mode and I'm going to add some point lights here, maybe make them a few different colors. I'm going to place them around near where we've painted these bubbles. And you can see that the light now affects the bubbles and can vary the color a little more. Now this is a really cool effect and we know that this brush is going to perform really brilliantly. It's probably a good idea to save a blend file where you make all of these brushes and call it something like brushes.blend and use this as your library file to append brushes from. Do be sure, however, to constantly check that your fake user shield has been applied on any new brush you create and that you duplicate brushes before modifying all of their settings to make a new brush.